Cleary presents a unique look at Northwest Arkansas with music, interviews, drama, and personalities. And now, here's Mike. I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. It rained all night the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun's so hot I froze to death, Susanna don't you cry. Oh Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. American composer Stephen Collins Foster was born in a middle-class family on July 4th, 1826 in Lawrenceville, Pittsburgh. He was the ninth child born to his mother Eliza and his father William Foster. His father was the mayor of a Pittsburgh suburb called the Allegheny City and he held a membership in the legislature formed by the state of Pennsylvania. And Stephen Foster taught himself to play the clarinet, guitar, flute, and piano. And he did not have formal instruction in composition, but he was helped by Henry Kleber, a German-born music dealer in, Pens in Pittsburgh. And there are many biographies of Stephen Foster, but the details of his life differ wild, widely. Foster wrote very little about himself, and his brother Morrison Foster may have destroyed much information that he judged might reflect negatively upon the Foster family. Regardless, Stephen Foster was a composer and songwriter who wrote 286 songs, spanning a writing career of 20 years and is considered the most famous songwriter to have emerged in the 19th century. In 1846, Foster moved to Cincinnati to work for Irwin and Foster Steamboat Agency as a bookkeeper, where he came across the lives of people from the Irish working class as well as the aristocracies of the English and the Scottish people. Well, at the time, the entertainment of choice was what was called minstrel shows. A small group of entertainers would sit in a semicircle and take turns telling jokes or singing songs. Well, many of these songs had raunchy lyrics and were not entirely suitable for younger or more genteel listeners. Foster corresponded with E.P. Christie of the Christie Minstrels, and wrote songs for his group that were more appropriate for general audiences. And these songs had lively tunes and catchy lyrics that quickly became very popular. Well, the Kemp Town ladies sing this song, do da, do da. Camp Town racetracks five miles long, oh, the do da day. Well, I went to the races, but my head caved in, do da, do da. I came back home with a pocket full of tin, oh, do da day. Gonna run all night, gonna run all day. Well, I bet my money on a bobtail nag, somebody bet on the bay. Foster and Christie reached an agreement that all of Foster's songs would be bought by E.P. Christie, sung first by the minstrels at every show, and the sheet music credit would say, as sung by the Christie minstrels. Foster soon gave up the job as bookkeeper and devoted himself entirely to writing songs. In 1850, Stephen Foster moved back to Pittsburgh and remained with his family for the next six years. And during this time, he wrote more than 160 songs. 
Way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away. That's where my heart is churning ever. That's where the old folks stay. All up and down the whole creation, settle the I roam. Still longing for the old plantation and for the old folks at home. All the world is sad and dreary everywhere I roam. Oh, Lordy, how my heart grows weary far from the old folks at home. On July 22, 1850, Stephen Foster married Jane Denny McDowell and settled in Pittsburgh. They had a daughter named Marion from the marriage. His addiction to alcohol led to many separations from his wife and repeated reconciliations. During one such separation, he wrote the song for his wife, Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair. I dream of Jeannie with the light brown hair, floating like a vapor on the soft summer air. When the Civil War broke out in 1861, Stephen Foster wrote many songs which told about heroism, patriotism, love, and homesickness. But none of the songs could make an indelible mark like his old songs had. Foster became sick with a fever in January 1864. Weakened, he fell in his hotel in the Bowery, cutting his neck. His writing partner, George Cooper, found him still alive, but lying in a pool of blood. Stephen Foster died in Bellevue Hospital three days later at the age of 37. Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. Starlight and dewdrops are waiting for thee. Sounds of the rude world heard in the day, loved by the moonlight, have all passed away. Beautiful dreamer, awake unto me. Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. An account by George Cooper may suggest that Foster may have taken his own life, but as I mentioned earlier, Foster's brother may have covered it up to protect the family image from scandal. Stephen Foster's songs are still popular after more than 150 years since the time that they were written. My Old Kentucky Home is the official state song of Kentucky, adopted by the General Assembly on March 19th, 1928. The sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer and the people are gay. The corn top's ripe and the meadow is in bloom while the birds make the music all day. We will sing one song for that old Kentucky home, for the old Kentucky home far away. The tune, Old Folks at Home, also known as Way Down Upon the Swanee River that I sang earlier, became the official state song of Florida designated in 1935. I'm not sure what the Suwannee River has to do with Florida, but my producer told me that there is a Suwannee River in Florida, so there you have it. But maybe it's also because there's a lot of old folks at home down there. To this day, Stephen Foster is probably 
the most recognized American composer in many parts of the world. These melodies that I highlight are just a few of the songs made popular by the famous American composer. We'll be right back with more Mike Cleary Presents right after these announcements. Welcome back to Mike Cleary Presents. It was a cold and dark evening in mid-December in Northwest Arkansas. As fate would have it, we had an ice storm pass through our area and it wasn't too bad as storms go, but it left a thin layer of ice on everything. Regardless of the weather, our little dog Quinn had to go outside. So I put on my tennis shoes, hooked our small brown and white terrier to his leash, and off we ventured into the cold. We, kept, we crept cautiously up our sloping cement driveway to the main road. The half inch of ice made the trek far more treacherous than I expected. Well, Quinn quickly took care of business and we headed back to the house. Now, anybody who is familiar with Bella Vista, Arkansas, knows that very few driveways are perfectly level. Most of them have a bit of a slope to them, and others are just downright treacherous. Well, my driveway had more than a little slant, and when it's wet or icy outside, climbing or descending can be quite challenging. Well, needless to say, <laughs> partway down the driveway, I lost my footing on the slick surface and fell, slam, flat on my back. Unfortunately, I didn't think to bring a phone or a flashlight along. It was quickly getting darker, and I wondered how long I would lay there before someone discovered me. Well, I lay there on the driveway, staring up at the cloudy gray sky, taking a mental assessment of my condition. I was lucky, no serious damage done. They say that in moments like these, your life flashes before your eyes. Well, that didn't happen to me. It didn't come as a flash, but more of a slow motion life review. I replayed all the mistakes I made in my life, all the thoughtless words I had spoken, and all the opportunities that I had missed. To me, it seemed like I lay there for an eternity and had plenty of time to think and reflect, mostly on whether I would eventually come to be missed. Well, as I lay there on my back, shivering in the cold, I pondered how my family and friends might react if I had been seriously injured or maybe even killed. I imagine that some of my friends would be rather unhappy of the news of my untimely demise, and some might even be downright devastated. But what about the rest of the world? Would anyone really care if I was gone forever? Would I truly be missed? Had I made a valuable contribution to humanity in my lifetime? I remember a sign I once saw at a campground. It read, take only pictures, leave only footprints. Had the footprint that I cast upon this planet been an indelible one? Now, a person's contribution need not be making history by some huge, spectacular event. Many times it's in the simple act of changing one individual's life for the better. Have you ever heard of the term catalyst? It's a scientific term. A catalyst is something whose mere presence 
alters its surroundings. Take, for example, a group of men digging a ditch. They're working away, not trying very hard. Maybe some are just sitting around and chatting with each other, or maybe even just goofing off. And then the boss comes along. He sits perched up on the fence and watches the men work. Suddenly, they're all very busy and productive. The boss doesn't actually do anything to affect their behavior. He merely observes them. He is the catalyst to get them working. Sherlock Holmes once remarked to his friend Watson, it may be that you are not yourself luminous, but that you are a conductor of light. Some people without possessing genius have a remarkable power of stimulating it. Our mere presence can affect the world. Well, that's a powerful concept. We can use our energy for good purposes or for bad. You know how some folks say that certain people are a bad influence? Just being around certain groups can alter your mindset, either positively or negatively. That's why it's so important to surround yourself with people who lift you up, who are catalysts for positive energy. There's a scientific principle known as the observer effect. <laughs> Lots of science references in this talk today. In physics, the observer effect is the theory that the mere observation of a phenomenon inevitably changes that phenomenon. This is often the result of instruments that by through necessity of their use may alter the state of what they measure in some manner. A common example is checking the pressure in an automobile tire. This is difficult to do without letting out some of the air, thus changing the pressure. Similarly, it's not possible to see any object without light hitting the object and causing it to reflect that light. While the effects of observation are often negligible, the object still experiences a change. One illustration may be watching an artist at work. You simply being there can affect a person and make them feel self-conscious and inhibit his creativity. Like, I can't do anything while you're watching. Physicists have found that even passive or inactive observation can actually change the measured result. A famous example is the 1998 Wiseman experiment. This experiment measured passing electrons through an electronic detector. When the scientist observed the moving electrons, the particles actually changed course. These results have led to the popular belief that the conscious mind can directly affect reality. Amazing. It's like I mentioned before about being a catalyst. You don't have to actively participate in order to change the world. Your mere presence produces that effect. It's an awesome concept when you realize that you can change the world simply by your being in it. A smile or a kind gesture can change a person's day or encourage them to have a more positive attitude. The poet Maya Angelou wrote, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I recall a teacher in college who encouraged me to write my first novel. And her words of encouragement and moral support helped to build my confidence in my writing ability. So perhaps our legacy to this world is not to leave an indelible mark on the pages of history, but to bring out the best in others and help them to realize their true potential. So <laughs> back to my dilemma on that chilly December night. After laying there on the driveway for what seemed like a long while, I finally forced myself up to my feet 
and inched my way toward the house. Quinn stood shivering at the front door waiting for me to let him in. I smiled in knowing that at least my dog was glad that I was still in the world. I'm sure there are many others too. I realized that I didn't have to change history to make my mark on the world. All I needed was to leave this planet a little better place than when I joined it. That little icy slip served to remind me that my life may not need be spectacular or tremendous, but I suppose for me and for those who enjoy having me around, it's enough. And I have a song, of course, <laughs> about leaving your mark on the world. You think you gotta break a record or perform some heroic deed to make your mark and have your name go down in history. You may not even realize you've already done your part. You make a lasting impression when you touch somebody's heart. Don't think you're not important or your contribution small. Your life means much to those you touch, folks you may not know at all. The world's a little brighter place because we all have you. No, you may not ever realize all the good you do. We all want to be remembered and last far beyond our days. To share some immortality in our own small private way. But you do live on when you help someone. It becomes your legacy. Good deeds you did, kind words you said, can last for eternity. Don't think you're not important or your contribution small. Your life means much to those you touch, folks you may not know at all. This world's a little brighter place because we all have you. No, you may not ever realize all the good you do. Yes, this world's a little brighter place because we all have you. No, you may not ever realize all the good you do. Thanks for tuning in to Mike Cleary Presents, and thank you for watching Bella Vista Community Television. We'll catch you here next time. Until then, have a wonderful day.